Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of GMAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we're going to do some multiple choice problems on page number 20 or page number uh, 65 rather. Page 65 and we're going to begin with number 20. Number 20. In number 20 we are told that it's certain in a certain firm from from 2000 to 2003 the number of employees went up by a quarter. In a certain firm, the number of employees went up by a quarter from 2000 to 2003. And then we are told that from 2003 to 2006, it decreased by a third. The number of employees went down by a third. We are further told that in 2006, number of employees in 2006, we are told, was exactly 100. The question is, how many people did we start out with? Well, we have two choices as always. We can solve this problem in a classical way, in a traditional way, in an orthodox way, algebraic way, geeky way, the nerdy way, or we can just plug in numbers. Let's just plug in numbers. What we're going to do here, you see we have one, one quarter and one third. So eventually we're going to have to take uh, one quarter of the number, some, some number, and a third of a number that we are plugging in. So it's, it's a good idea to plug in something that's a multiple of 12, because 12 4 times 3 is a multiple of 12. Let's plug in 1200. Let's pretend, let's pretend, let's make up a number. Let's pretend that in 2000, in 2000, they had 1200 people. And based on that, we will work through it and see what happens. And we'll do the adjustment at the end. So, if you're going to pretend that we have 1200 people in, in, in 2000, where is 1200 coming from? Well, it's, coming, it's falling from the sky. We're just making it up. We're just making it up. And then what happens? It tells us that it went up, it increased by a quarter. A quarter of 1200 is 300. So it becomes 1500. What happens after that? It goes down by a third. A third, a third of 1500 is 500. So it's going to become a thousand. Now it's just a fluke that it's a thousand had it been 300, listen carefully, instead of a thousand had it been 300 at the end, we would have realized that we are supposed to have a hundred people, but we have 300, which means that we have to take a third of every number, we take a third of everything. But here, this thing is not lining up properly, I'm going to move it up so, it is, so that it's not... Much better. So we are supposed to have we are supposed to have a hundred people in 2006. Instead of hundred, we have a thousand. But that just means that we have to take a one one tenth of every number. Just drop a zero and everything. That's it. It it means that we must have had we must have had 120 people when we began this story. That's the next one, number 21. Uh, if the problem says that you had 100 people uh, uh, at the end and you end up with 200 people based on the number that you plugged in, just take half every, everything. If the problem tells you that, uh, that, uh, that, that you have 100 people at the end and you end up with 50, just multiply all the numbers in the beginning. By, uh, take two times everything. You get the idea. Just make the adjustment at the end. Just make the adjustment at the end. But in the beginning, don't be timid. Don't be shy. Uh, don't be uh, cowardly. Just plug in anything that anything that you like. Do you understand? Number twenty-one. The word I was going to use was timorous, timid, cowardly, be intrepid. Be brave, be courageous. 
be valiant. Don't be a chicken when you, when you want to plug in number, plug in anything that comes to your mind. Number 21. It says, which of the following must be true about, about the average and the median of five consecutive numbers. Five consecutive, five consecutive, not just annual numbers, but five consecutive integers. There's no such thing as five consecutive numbers. By numbers I meant the whole numbers, integers. So five consecutive integers, which of the following must be true. The key here is must be. So what are we going to do again? What we always do. So here, here are the statement first. Uh, First statement says, average is one of the integers, is one, one of the integers. The second statement says, median is one of the integers. And the third says that the median equals average. So we're going to do what we always do, instead of working in abstract term and just, just working with algebra with n and n plus 1 and n plus 2 and all, all of that crap. Just plug in numbers, 5 consecutive numbers. Any number is fine. Any number is fine. 5, as long as there are 5 consecutive numbers. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I hope you're able to see that because they are equally spaced, the average is this guy. Is average one of the integers? Of course, the average is 4. It's one of the integers. Is median one of the integers? This is the median. 4 is the median because they're consecutive, consecutive, consecutive. They don't have to be consecutive. They have to be equally spaced. We could have had 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. It will be the same. As long as they're equally spaced, the average is going to be the middle number. Median is going to be middle number. Median is going to be one of the integers. And median is going to be equal to average because they're equally spaced. All of the three statements are correct. All of the three statements are correct. Number 22. It says we have 16, 16 coins, <coughs> dimes and quarters. Dimes and quarters. And we have a total of two dollars and thirty-five cents. Question is how many quarters do we have? How many quarters do we have? So first thing first, let's define our variables. So we're gonna use D to represent the number of dimes, number of dimes and the other one I already used Q to represent number of quarters. So we have number we have unknown number of quarters, unknown number of dimes. That's what we have to figure out how many dimes we have, how many quarters we have. So we have two unknowns. In order for us to be able to solve for two unknowns, we must have two independent equations. Do we have them? Do we have two equations? The answer is yes. The first equation is right here. There are 16 coins. The number of quarters, the number of dimes must equal 16. The second equation is right here. The total value is $2.35. Total value is $2.35. And how do we represent that? Well, if we have d number of dimes, then d number of dimes have a value of 10 times d. If we have 3 dimes, 10 times 3 is 30 cents. This is expressed in cents. This is 30 cents. Similarly, I don't know where the 10 came from. Oh, 10, 10, is the, 10, is the, 10 is the value of the coin. 10 is the value of the coin. 10 cents. So if you have D number of dimes, 10 times D, represents the amount of value. Similarly, 25 
times Q, for example, if you have three quarters, if Q is equal to three, three times 25 is 75, that will be the value of the quarters. And that has to equal 235. This is all expressed in cents. Where does 235 come from? 235 is the fact that it's been given 2035 cents. Since this whole thing is a multiple of five, let's divide the whole equation by five so we don't have to we don't have to deal with large numbers. Let's divide the entire equation by five. If we divide 10 by five, we get two d's. We divide 25 by five, we get five q's. Let's divide this by five. 20 has four fives. Four fives are 20. After we take away 20 from 23, we have a remainder of three. Three goes and joins the fives and becomes a 35. And 35 will have seven quarters. Uh, 35 has seven fives. 35 has seven fives. And then the second equation is right here. The second equation is right here. We're going to take this equation, which comes from the fact that there are 16, 16 coins. Now, because we have two d's here, two d's or five q, doesn't matter. We can either multiply this equation by five and get rid of, get rid of. Uh, uh, actually, I have the, I have them written them in, in the reverse order. If you multiply the entire equation by five, you can get rid of the q. Or if you multiply the entire equation by two, you can get rid of d. Let's multiply the two entire equation by 2, but I'm going to change the order so it's easier to deal with. d plus q. If you multiply this equation by 2, the entire equation by 2, we end up with 2d. This comes from here. This is this equation times 2. Plus 2q. It says 16, so instead of 16, it's going to be 32. There we go. Now we're just going to subtract one equation from the other. If you're going to subtract it, you have to change the sign. This positive becomes negative. This positive becomes negative. This positive becomes negative. And this positive 2d and the negative 2d are going to cancel out. That was the whole point. And 5q minus 2q is 3q. 3q equals, uh, we have a 5 here, and we have a 1 here. There you go. 3q equals 15, so q must equal 3. q must equal 3. And that's all there is. Nothing to it. And if you want to quickly verify it, we can verify it also. If Q is equal to 3, because there are 13 all to, 16 altogether, if Q is equal to 3, then we must have 13 dimes. 13 dimes is $1.30. 13 dimes is $1.30, and 3 quarters is 75 cents. If they add up to what they are told, which it does not, it is 205. Oh! 3q equals 15, and if we divide both sides by 3, we're dividing by 3, not 5. We're dividing by 3, not 5. You see, this is how you catch your mistake, which is why it's always a good idea to verify your work. 3q divided by 15, so q is equal to 5, not 3. q is equal to 5. And 5 quarters of the word, 5 quarters of the word, dollar 25. And now it should add up 5. Oh, then if you have five quarters, if you have five quarters, then we must have 11, 11 dimes. And 11 dimes are worth dollar 10. 11 dimes are worth dollar 10. I can't believe I'm making so many mistakes. And now, now it confirms we have 2,035 cents. Because if you have two more quarters, then we must have two fewer dimes. Because they have to add up to 16 coins. We have 16 coins altogether. And the question was how many how many quarters we have? The answer was answer was we have five quarters. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. We are buying we are buying eggs. We are going to buy we are going to buy our eggs for two dollars and eighty cents a dozen, and we are going to sell them. For 30 cents each. The question is the question is how much profit are we going to make if we were to sell five dozen eggs at 30 cents each? We are selling them individually 30 cents each, having bought those eggs at $2.80 for a dozen.
let's find out, shall we? Let's find out how much revenue we have, how much are we getting. So we are selling it for, for 30 cents, 30 cents each. And if we're selling them for 30 cents each, which means for a dozen, we're going to get 12 times 3 is 3. We're, we're going to get 360 for a dozen. This is how much we're getting because we're selling them at 30 cents each. There are 12 and a dozen. We're going to get 3060 cents for each dozen. But we only paid 280. We only paid 280. This is this is our cost. This is the sale price. This is for a dozen. So if you're getting 360 for a dozen and we bought it for 280, we have a profit of 80 cents. 80 cents per dozen. This is our profit. 80 cents per dozen. And how many are we selling? We are selling 5 dozens. Multiply that by 5. 8 fives are 40. It looks like we are going to make $4 in profit. We are going to make it even $4 on a 5 dozen. Let's go to the next one. 24. Twenty-four says that uh, we have twenty-four cards, twenty-four cards, and we number them. We're going to number them, each numbered one through twenty-four, a different number. Each one of them is number different number. We're going to draw one. We're going to draw one card at random. The question is this: What's the probability that? Uh, that the card that we draw is either uh, is divisible by 2 and 3 or is divisible by 7. You have to read the problem yourself. You must have the book in front of you as I always remind you in every video because if I were to write out every single thing in the problem it will take forever. You understand? You have to read it yourself. I'm trying to save some time here. So, the question is, if you have 24 cards, each card is numbered 1 through 24, individual number, no number is repeated, and if I were to draw one number, one card out of those 24 cards at random, what are the odds that the card that I chose happens to be, a number on that card happens to be multiple of both 2 and 3, 2 and 3, or the number on the card is divisible by seven. Do you understand? Well, so let's list them. Let's list them. Keep in mind, we have twenty-four cards, one through twenty-four. One through twenty-four. The first, first one, two, three, four, five. Those numbers are not multiple of two and three. The first number that is multiple of two, two and three is six. And then we're going to have twelve. Nothing in between is going to be both multiple of two and three. Do you understand? There are many numbers that are multiple of uh, 2, all the even numbers of course, and there are many numbers that are multiple of 3's, but we're looking for something that's a multiple of both 2 and 3, which means it has to be divisible by 6. And if the number has to be divisible by 6, it's very simple. It's 2, that is 6, 12, 18, 24. That's the first part. Or it's divisible by 7. If it's divisible by 7, which means we can pick up 7, we can pick up 14, we can pick up 21. Those are the possibilities. How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 out of 24. The odds of success is 7 out of 24. Those are our odds. Number 25. In number 25, we are told that we have a circumference of a circle Circumference of a circle, I'm not going to write it, is inscribed in a square which has an area of 25 pi. So here's your, here's your square and we're going to inscribe a circle in here Hopefully, 
the circle that you're going to draw is going to be a little bit healthier, minus not. The question is, what's the perimeter of the square? Well, we are told that the circle that we just drew, inscribed simply means, inscribed simply means it has to touch all the, all the four sides. It has to touch it. It cannot go outside it, it cannot be smaller than that. Which means this circle right here. And we are told that its area is 25 pi. Area of a circle we know, area of a circle is, so we know is pi r squared. And we are told that that is equal to 25 pi. Are you with me? If we divide, if we divide both sides by pi, pi is going to drop out. r squared equals 25, which tells us that the r is 5. The radius of the circle is 5. The radius of this particular circle is 5. Well, if radius is 5, if radius is 5, then the, per, then, then the diameter must be 10. And the diameter of the circle, diameter of the square, diameter of that square is one of the sides. And there are four sides, obviously. And since they are looking for the perimeter of the square, the perimeter is simply 40. Because there are four sides, and 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 each is to, each is 10. Just give me one second here. This was number 25, wasn't it? In my work, I have a different answer. This is number 25. Number 25. The answer is E. E is 100. What did I do wrong? This is all wrong. This is entirely wrong. I cannot believe it. I did something. I, I did something so silly. The circumference. This is this is not circumference. This is not circumference. This is all wrong. Circumference is two pi r. Two pi r. You have to start again. It's a good thing I checked it. Which is why. Which is why. The wrong answer is one of the answer choices. The wrong answer is always one of the answer choices. There is one right answer and the other four are the four most common mistakes for people, for idiots who are not paying attention, like myself. I cannot believe I did something as retarded as this. This is the, this is the formula for the area. We are not told that the area is equal to 25 pi. It clearly says there. It says circumference of the circle. Circumference is, is circumference that's, which is circumference of a circle inscribed in a, inscribed in a square is 25. I should have written the whole thing down. Circumference of a circle, circumference of a circle inscribed in a square is 25 pi. This is circumference. Let's start again. Let's start again. This is wrong. Circumference is equal to 2 pi r and we are told it is 25 pi. 25 pi. 25 pi. Let's start again. So if you divide both sides by pi, both sides by pi, pi is going to drop out and 2 times r equals 25. 2 times, 2 times r equals 25 and 2 times r is the diameter. Diameter is 25. This is wrong. The diameter, diameter from here to here is 25. And therefore the perimeter is going to be 25 times 4. The perimeter is equal to 100. Oh boy, let's do the next one. You know, sometimes you try to save a couple of seconds. Had I, had I taken my time to write everything out, maybe I wouldn't have screwed up. Who knows? 26. I thought I was being clever. In 26 we are told that 1 is less than x, which in turn is less than y, which in turn is less than z. And we are looking for something that has the greatest value among the five answer choices. Now, what I found interesting here is that 
it says if x if 1 is less than x and x is less than y y in turn is less than c which of the following has the greatest value it does not say anywhere at all in the problem that these x y and z have to be whole numbers it does not say in the problems that they have to be integers even though it doesn't say that and because it doesn't say that which means we can go either way it, they can also be integers because they don't tell us that they can be integers so let's just let's just plug in numbers let's just plug in very simple straightforward numbers 1 is less than 2 2 is less than 3 and 3 is less than 4 and we're just going to go through the answer choices and see which one gives us the largest value the only way we're going to screw this one up is the same way as the last problem which is if I'm not paying attention as long as you pay attention we should be okay okay let's begin answer choice A says z times x plus 1 Make sure that we put in the writing z is equal to 4. 4 times x plus 1, x is equal to 2, so this gives us 12. And since we are looking for the greatest value, if we find an answer choice that's more than 12, we can get rid of a. Right now, as it, as it stands, a is a contender. a is a contender because as of right now, there is nobody else in the ring. It's the only one. z times y plus 1. z is equal to 4 y is equal to 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 is equal to 16, there we go, a is gone. a cannot be the largest value because we want, we found 1 that is more than a, a was 12, this is, this is 16, so a is not the answer, a is not the answer, as of now, as of right now, b could be the answer at the end, but a is not, let's look at c, c says x times y plus z, x is equal to 2, and y plus z, 4 plus 3 plus 4 is going to be 7, it is 14. And 14 is less than 16. 14 is less than 16. C cannot be the answer. B still stands. B still stands victorious in the ring. Until somebody, until somebody else comes and knocks him out. B says y is equal y times x plus z y is 3, x is 2 plus z, 2 plus 6 is 18. Oh, what do you know? 18, that is more than 16, b is gone. b is gone, b is not the answer. Let's look at the very last one. e says z times x plus y, z is equal to 4, x plus y, x plus y is going to be 5, voila, it is 20, 20 is more than 18, d is not the answer, the answer is e, the correct answer is e, and that was the end of it, I was going to go on to the next page, I was going to go on to the next page, but I think we're going to stop here, because otherwise the video is going to be too long, Oh, I forgot to say something in the beginning, which I which I always do, and I forgot to, uh, for, forgot uh, in this uh, this time. If after having watched this entire video, you found this helpful, and if you decide that you would like to work with me, if you would like to hire my services as your tutor, you can reach me at Keshwani Prep, Keshwani Prep at iCloud.com. Send me an email, and I'll be more than happy to do what I can to help you. Okay, KeshwaniPrep.com. I'll see you tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll do some uh, data sufficiency problems. We alternate, okay? One day we do multiple choice problems. The next day we do data sufficiency problems. That way we can take we can take care of both of them together. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.